Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this lesson is called Knowing Your Historical Design Styles. So art history wasn't exactly my favorite class in university. I was really bad at memorizing dates. Uh, but it turned out that what I learned there was super important later in life as a concept artist. So not only is it so that when the art director uses a term like Baroque, you have some clue what they're talking about, but it also I could take what I learned from art history and I can use it to define art styles for fictional universes, whether sci-fi or fantasy. So this lesson is going to go over a couple of major artistic styles from our own history, um, show how they define a specific look through their shape language, and then how you can use that knowledge in order to invent your own species, worlds, or universes. So there have been countless design styles throughout human history, but there are a few that come up pretty frequently and define a look that can be applied all over the world. So the examples I'm going to use in this lesson are Baroque, Art Deco, and Art Nouveau. And these styles are applied to any number of items, from objects like chairs, sofas, and lamps, to architecture like buildings, and even clothing and character items like jewelry. So what, first thing we're going to start with is a chair. So this chair is a Baroque chair, and Baroque is a style of European architecture, music, and art from the 17th and 18th centuries, and is characterized by ornate detail. So before we get into what makes this chair Baroque, let's look at a few more examples. So here we have a Baroque chair, a Baroque sofa, and a Baroque lamp, and a Baroque table. And now that you see a bunch of different examples of the style, you can probably start seeing the trend. So if I had to describe it, I would probably call it organic flowery detail. And you can see that up here, along here, um, uh, along the, the lamp. And despite the fact that it is very organic, it's also very symmetrical. Uh, you'll notice, for example, that everything that's here is an exact duplicate of what's over there. And uh, the same with down here and uh, this area over here as well. Also, the detail frequently shows up in gold, although not always, as you can see in the example of this couch here. And then this is just a little graphic I made showing kind of an example of the kind of detail that is usually broke on a, a surface, breaking it down to its basic shape language. And Baroque also appears in architecture, not just objects. So notice how you have many of the same elements. You have around these pillars here at the top, you have these sort of flowery three-dimensional details. And then notice how very symmetric everything is down this uh, center line here. Everything here is exactly duplicated on the other side. So now that we've boiled down some of the details that frequently define something as Baroque, let's go back to our chair example and look at a bunch of different chairs. So these are all chairs, but as you can tell, they're very different looking from each other. So this second chair here, this is Art Deco, which is a more modern aesthetic uh, that frequently has a streamlined feel, like you're going really fast in a train or a plane. And notice how you have these three swooping lines that form these legs. And uh, just to note, Art, Art Deco is actually a pretty complex style, and it has um, other details that make up the Art uh, Deco style. But for the sake of this lesson, we're just going to focus on this specific element of shape language. And then this third chair here is Art Nouveau. And while, like Baroque, um, it's also organic and flowery, it has a number of key differences. So first off, while um, this chair happens to be symmetric, Art Nouveau is frequently far less symmetric than Baroque. And then second, instead of these small little concentrations of detail, the flowery elements are much larger and swooping and flowing. And also, since Art Nouveau is uh, supposed to be connecting with nature, you're far more likely to see natural wood as a material. So here's some more examples of objects in the three styles. So we've already seen the Baroque chair and the uh, table and lamp, but check out this Baroque door. So you got the same strong sense of symmetry, and then you have these flowery, uh, small ornate details going on. And then here's Art Deco. We already looked at this chair, but notice that this lamp also has the same sort of three swooping streamlined lines. And then the same with this elevator door. So you got these sort of speed lines going here, um, although this one is a little more angular than the um, more uh, smooth lines that are in the lamp or the chair. 
and an Art Nouveau. We have our Art Nouveau chair here, uh, but then we have a lamp, and the lamp has those same long swooping lines that are uh, very organic, a little bit like uh, stems of plants. And then over here is a door, and this is not only a good example again of the big sort of swooping stem lines, but also an example of going non-symmetric. And the styles certainly don't stop there. Um, these are just three styles, but we have uh, arts and crafts, we have gothic, we have brutalist, we have uh, rococo, and that's just a few of the western art styles. You also have countries and cultures from Africa to Asia, and each one of them themselves have dozens of sub-styles to study. And um, after you look at, at enough examples of these, uh, you can really start to pinpoint what is the shapes and attributes that define a specific look, and then file them away in your visual library. So why do I need to know this stuff anyway? So first off, say you're about to work on a movie or a game, and the art director says, we're going for a Baroque style. Now you may not be an expert in Baroque architecture or furniture, but if you at least know the basics of what Baroque looks like, you can immediately speak their language, and you have something helpful to add to the conversation. And having something important to add to the conversation to an art director is how you become indispensable at your job. And of course, after you've had those initial discussions, if you want to go back and do a deeper dive into the design style, um, that's also a really awesome thing to do, you know, looking at books and uh, the internet. So the second situation is a mashup. So it's quite common to take one or more styles and mix them together for a film or a game. For example, maybe you're on a game and the director says that this world is going to be a mashup of sci-fi, art deco, and baroque. And just as an example of somebody doing that, um, Lynch's Dune film from the 80s has lots of elements of sci-fi, Baroque, and Art Deco. So knowing these styles will give you an immediate picture in your head uh, when the art director tells you what the style of the project you're about to work on is. And you can also use that knowledge to clarify the intentions of the art director, like you could uh, ask them, would Lynch's Dune be a good example of the overall look that you're going for? So knowing your styles helps you communicate more effectively and faster. And third, sometimes you have to make up a style from scratch. And if you already have a good idea of how this happens in real life, and how a few design attributes and how um, shape language can appear in everything from chairs to lamps to buildings, it's far easier to create something brand new. For example, um, one of my favorites is the dwarves from the Lord of the Rings films. So the design motif and shape language for the dwarves are diamonds, triangles, and kind of angular gem shapes. And not only uh, did those shapes represent the gems that the dwarves were mining from the ground, but it also represented their physical bodies. You know, they were short, wide, stout, and kind of immovable from the ground, sort of like uh, the pyramids with that strong uh, triangular base. Knocking a dwarf off its feet, you know, is tough, and uh, it's the same thing with these shapes. And just look at all the ways they integrated those shapes into the design language of the dwarves. So here's some architecture, and you can see all these triangles and these sort of gem-like shapes in the giant pillars. And then here's uh, Gimli's axe, and again you notice the, the triangles and the triangle motif in these patterns here. And uh, even the handle of the uh, axe has these sort of diamond patterns in the leather that uh, you would grab hold of. And then here's some examples of uh, dwarven ring, and again you have these strong triangular and uh, diamond shapes going on. So while I could go into a long art lesson on each and every one of these art movements, my goal with this lesson was to give you just a little taste and to give you a method for analyzing the art movement uh, based on reoccurring shape themes. And this will hopefully help you not only work in these styles, uh, but also will give you an idea of how to invent your own style for a completely made up world. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and can use this in your own work. And uh, please go to neilblevins.com uh, to the art lesson section if you want to see more art lessons. Or uh, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to be notified the next time I post an art-related video. Thank you very much.